A battery pack is just as it sounds, a pack of batteries. In this case, alkaline batteries that you can get in any regular store. You'll also sometimes hear battery pack refer to something like a lithium ion battery pack, where it's a bag of chemicals making up the battery. But in this case, we're talking about combining batteries into a pack using nothing but dollar store electrical tape and some wire. So the wire I use is this real simple, real cheap jumper wire or header wire, whichever you prefer. It's just regular old thin copper wire and soldered on are these metal pins. It just makes everything easier in hobby electronics. You don't have to use this wire, but it is recommended. I got mine off of SparkFun. You can get it off Amazon. You can get it in little packs like I got some more in the Arduino pack. Just had some in there. Mail to mail. Jumper, header, wire, whatever you want. But if you don't want to get that, go to a hardware store and find real thin wire. Uh, you want solid core, because braided is lots of little wires, and you take that out and it's like trying to thread a needle. It's a pain in the butt. So get you some real thin, solid core wire. Or, ideally, get this, because then you won't have to strip it or anything. And the final thing you will want to have, again, perfectly fine from the dollar store, aluminum foil. Get a little cheapy box, you're not gonna be using much. Now, what's the point of making a battery pack? First of all, alkaline batteries have two properties. They have a voltage that they put out, and they have a maximum current that they can put out. Uh, if you use them near that maximum current, they're going to heat up, they're gonna not last long, so you don't wanna use them at the maximum current. So you combine batteries to increase the voltage to power something bigger, or to provide more current to power something faster. Now, your battery-powered devices all over the place will use this. If you open up a remote control and you put two or four batteries in there, I have a label maker that takes six of them. Uh, anytime you put more than one battery inside a device, this is the same thing. We're just using electrical tape and aluminum foil instead of the pieces of metal inside that chamber. But it's the same thing. Put very simply, when you take a 1.5 volt battery and you stick it in series with another one, you now have a 3 volt battery. Add another one, you get 4.5. The voltages just add if you put them in series. If you put them in parallel, the voltages stay the same, but both of them are supplying power at the same time, which means you're splitting your current draw between the two. So if these can put out one amp each, whatever the number happens to be, and you want a one amp draw, then you can have two batteries to draw half an amp roughly from each and make the batteries last longer. Now you may be familiar with the concept of a short circuit. The fact that I'm holding this battery in both my fingers, which is a complete electrical circuit, and there is current flowing through me right now, but it's almost completely negligible. The reason for that is the human body has a huge amount of resistance. If I turn my multimeter up into the 20 mega ohm range, and I measure between my two fingers, you will see it is reading in roughly the two to three mega ohm range. That's a lot of ohms. This is why I can hold the battery like this and take no harm, because the battery is supplying only 1.5 volts. And if you have two mega ohms, so you can do it this way, that's the true two mega ohms, this is not much different. Low volts, high resistance means low amps, which means not much is happening. Nine volt battery, still not doing much, but this one, you may have heard of people that will uh, stick their tongue on it, get a little charge because the tongue is wet, a much better electrical conductor, a little fun of that if they're really bored but the point is that's why you don't have to worry about holding batteries so let's change it let's make a short circuit right here on my fingers and let's see what happens well nothing ow until you notice that delay that was not an electric shock that was heat this wire tip heated up very fast. So that's the other reason these batteries are safe to handle, because they have a very limited maximum current draw. If you took a regular power supply that can supply a good number of amps, even at 1.5 volts, and you short it like that, you will hopefully blow its fuse. But this one, it just started supplying as many amps as it could, and then no more than that. But as it was a short circuit, plenty of amps were going through the wire, and that manifests as heat because Wires have resistance. Resistance generates heat. So as it was passing through the wire, every single bit of it was converted to heat very quickly. This is why if you've ever heard a story about somebody with change in their pocket and a battery in their pocket and their pants catch fire, that's why. So now let's make some battery packs. So first, as anyone who has used electrical tape will attest, it is a pain in the butt because every time you let go, it goes right back on there and you're digging it off. So I just took this nice tape dispenser and put it on there. Now, the... Uh, the little blades here are not going to be enough to actually cut it, so I still need a pair of scissors. But boy, oh boy, is this a lot easier. So the first thing we're going to do is make 
a one battery pack. Stay with me, I have a reason. So you take a battery. Now, the, what we have to do is you basically are going to put the wire on here and you're going to tape it down with electrical tape. I have come up with this genius idea of aluminum foil. So very quickly, simply, easily, here's what we do. You just take off some aluminum foil, make a little ball. Then you take off some electrical tape, get a nice long piece, don't be stingy, this stuff's at the dollar store. This stuff is at the dollar store. Get you a good piece, maybe even a little longer than that. Stick the foil ball in the middle of the sticky part. Take your battery. Stick it on the end. Smush it down. Now the other thing about electrical tape is it's stretchy. This is important because you've got to apply pressure to keep the contact on. So stretch it down. All right, so you got your foil ball pressed. Stretch it down. Stick it on. Turn it around. Oh, that came off. Just stretch it. Put it down. There you go. Let's do the other end. The, other, the end with the nubbin, the pain in the butt end. Take another piece. Don't be afraid to take too much. This is not precision work. Make a little foil ball. Get yourself a length of tape. Stick the foil ball on. Put it on your battery. Smush it down. Connect. Remember to stretch. So you just take it, stretch it, put it down. Then smash it down. Give it a roll. Make sure it's nice and tight. There. One battery pack. So much easier than doing something like this, which was my old method, that's fragile, the, the wires like to come out, and it's just not good. So how do we get wires into this? Oh, oh, not like that, broke my wire. Just stick it in the foil. There you go, there's one. Stick it in the foil. There's the other one. You might say, aluminum foil is not that great a conductor. Well, you're right, but it's good enough. We're dealing with alkaline batteries here. So let's test the resistance. Let's put it nice and low. I have here aluminum foil, and I have here multimeter probes. What is the resistance across the two ends of this aluminum foil? 0.3 ohms, 3 tenths of an ohm. Now that does not speak for how much amperage can go through here safely. Again, we're not dealing with that much amperage. We're not dealing with that much voltage. We're not dealing with much of anything. These are batteries. So foil will work just fine. And it's cheap enough you can always use fresh. Very little oxidation. So now that we have wires in our battery, let's go ahead and plug it in and we'll just measure it just to make sure it works. Also, pay attention to which end has the nubbin. So that's the positive end. Don't want to forget that. Of course, if you do forget that, you'll get a negative voltage. You can always test it that way. 1.5 volt battery, so we'll set that on two volts. And I'll put the positive probe there. And I'll put the negative probe there. And you will see minus 1.59 volts. That means I have it backwards. And of course I do, because there's the plus. So this is the positive wire, and this is the negative wire. Get in there. And you will now see 1.59 volts. Of course, I meant to do that the whole time to simply demonstrate that's how you check to see if you have screwed up, just like that. So now we're going to make a two battery pack in series to double the voltage. So this part is the easiest part. You just take some electrical tape. Remember the positive end of one to the negative end of the other, right? The nub end is the positive end. So you just put it down on the table, all right? You put the tape on one, hold them together, stretchy. Make sure to stretch it a little bit, and there you go. Now, turn it over, you're going to see it starts bowing out. That means you have successfully stretched it. So just put one on the other side. So push it down, put a piece there, stretch it, put a piece there. And now you have that. Now you just do your foil on your two ends. And there's your two battery pack, which we will now measure to make sure we're correct. So step one, where's my other one? So we'll just take our wires back out of this one, put them in this one. So that is the positive end. That is me smashing my wire. Don't roll it too tight, you'll have a problem getting your wire in. I did it a little too tight. So there's the positive end. Here's the negative end. Be sure it's on there. It is messy, but there you go. Positive, negative. It's okay to be messy because these are temporary. So of the meter, positive, negative. And of course it's three volts now, so I have to turn it up and you will see 3.17, 3.18 volts. So in series, it doubles the voltage. Now one thing to mention, if you're doing this, it'll probably be easier to put the two foil balls on first and then stick them together. Uh, it doesn't much matter with two, but if you get longer, like this monstrosity, It'll be much easier to do the foil balls at the end first. And I have these little marshmallows. One of them fell on the floor. Don't worry about that. Just stick the wires in when I'm not using them. They're not marshmallows. They're foam balls from the craft store. But stick the wire in there. That means it can't 
happen to touch any metal that happens to be nearby. This is eight 1.5 volt AA batteries in series, providing 12 volts. I used this to test PC fans that take 12 volts. And the best thing is, when you're done with your batteries, just take the tape off, you got your batteries back. And now, we will make a different two battery pack, this time in parallel. So this one is pretty easy as well. First thing we're gonna do is we're going to tape the batteries together so they're not rolling around on us. Make sure the positive end and positive end are together because you want them both pointing the same way. Just tape them together. Make it a little stretchy. Oops. Make it a little stretchy. Stretchy over here. Tape them together. Now they're of a nice piece. So now you take your foil and you actually make a connector. The outsides of the the ones that have the plus and minus over here, the regular long ones, the outside is not conductive because that certainly wouldn't work. So all you do is you make a foil ball that fits over both. Get you some tape, get a longer piece, put your foil ball on it. Then you just do the same thing you did before. Shove it down. Stretchy one, it's actually easier because you have more thumb space. Stretchy two. And then you need one extra piece as a stabilizer. You just put it the other way. Right in the middle, stretchy one, stretchy two. Then you do the same thing as before. Make a foil ball, well in this case a foil oval or whatever you want to call it. Just smush it on down. Make something long, not too tight, because as we discovered, you might have trouble getting your wires in. It's always embarrassing when it's too tight to fit in. So we'll smush the foil down, stretchy, stretchy again, nice and easy. Get you your stabilizing piece. Again, don't be stingy with the electrical tape. It's a dollar, or a pound, or whatever you happen to use. It'll be cheap, trust me. Stretchy, stretchy, and there you go. You have a two battery pack. Let's put some wires in. Let's try and keep track of positive and negative this time, so I can see a plus there. So this must be the positive end. Stick it in and don't break the wire. There we go. Get it. Oh, I hit the side of the battery. Let's do it a little higher. There we go. And now we'll use, so use a red wire for the positive, black wire for the negative. That is the common convention you will see. So do negative. And you put, oh, dog on it. See, if it's too loose, it'll come out. If it's too tight, you won't get it in. You always want it to be just right. Just right. That was just right. Just try different points, there'll be different densities. Negative, positive. Let's measure voltage. Let's turn it back down to two because I know what's gonna happen. Because even though we have two batteries, where's my probe? There it is. Check it out. Two batteries, 1.594 volts. And that is the secret art of the homemade battery pack. These are, again, temporary. They're for testing. Throw them together, take them apart again. Whenever you need just some quick little power at a specific voltage, just do remember that your aluminum foil will limit your current draw. If you really need a significant amount of amperage from alkaline batteries, you can tape the wires directly to the battery, but you're better off getting an actual power supply that you can just specify the volts and amps out of. They're not expensive. They are expensive for a lark, but if you're a true hobbyist that's going to be doing a lot of this, it's worth it to just get one so you don't have to worry about making battery packs. But this is still a super useful thing every now and then. So that will do it for now. Be seeing you.